Are we? We're live. I just touched my fist. You should see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're live. It's Thursday night, and uh, it's been a beautiful day here. Um, I hope you're joining us from your kitchen or your living room or wherever you're joining us from tonight, and you've got a glass of wine or a beer in your hand, maybe. Cheers. 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 Welcome. Thursday night, we're in the well-seasoned kitchen. I'm Angie. This is Chef Dennis. And tonight... Occupied with a glass of wine. Pardon? Occupied with a glass of wine. Anyway. Sorry. Enter entertain yourself. I was drinking my wine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's always awkward. The starts are always awkward. It takes a couple minutes for everybody takes, to kind of yeah. gather and settle in and get their beverage it's, poured. It's just, a, what, what do they do in the highways? Merging. Merge. You just, you just can't just go like that. Merging just, into traffic. Merging into traffic. In <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So tonight I'm really excited to have um, one of my one of my original suppliers. I'm not going to say one of my oldest suppliers because she is not anywhere near the oldest supplier I have here. But she is one of our original suppliers at Well Seasoned. Uh, we're cooking with ahi. So ahi, I mean, I'm sure so many of you are familiar with this brand. It's become really sort of available all over Canada. Yeah, you're all over Canada. Western Canada, Western Canada for sure. So, so many of you have probably already had this product. And if you've been to any of our events or any of our shopping nights, you've tasted it because Diana and her family have come and sampled the product for, for years. Well Seasoned has been selling ahi since you first started. That's, you were my first, one of my first stores, for sure. And when, what year was that, Diana, when you started it? 2006. 2006. So for 15 years, uh, 15 years are of ahi. <laughs> um, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Diana's uh, product, Diana and her family immigrated to Canada, to Vancouver from Columbia. And this is, oh, a, nice. this is a condiment that she, it's part of your heritage. It's yeah. something you made growing up. And um, it was a, something that she used um, to feed her whole family. And when she came to Canada, she shared it, I think, at a soccer event or some sort of, um, you know, potluck kind of event. And people were like, oh, you need to make that. It's so delicious. So she started making it. Um, it's, it's very tasty, I'm not going to lie to you. Ahi originally is a pepper, right? It's, it's the Spanish word for peppers. Okay, because uh, I, I used to use ahi paste that used to come in yellow and a dark red jars. Yeah. And, and I use it for like mayonnaise or salad dressings. And when I first saw it, I thought it was it, but it's, it's different. These are condiments. Yeah, yeah, well, ahi is like you would say, like you would call ahi tabasco, so that you know tabasco is the type of pepper and the ahi. Okay. okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. See, I learned something today. Look at you uh, Five go. years, then nothing. Just blindly just used it. So um, David's just saying that people are having a hard time hearing Deanna's answer. So we'll okay. get Deanna to come up and talk a little bit about this. But originally, she started selling this product, which is what they now call the chunky chili condiment. But this was the only one originally. And um, everybody fell in love with this condiment to make guacamole. Well, it's not it's and I still make it with at my house. And this literally, you grab a fresh avocado, a really nice ripe avocado or two or three, put it in a bowl, take the pit out, obviously take the skin off, and mash it with this. And that is it. That's all you need to make wicked good um, why guacamole. Don't, why don't we make it tonight then? Make a little guac. Extra surprise for you. Whoever is uh. watching gets the extra. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so the sorry, only thing actually. missing in this for me for guacamole is a little bit of cilantro. And I would just throw in some fresh cilantro, oh, yeah. but other than some that, it, is, it makes wicked good cilantro. So Deanna, over the years, has expanded the product line to include some hot sauces. She even has a marinara sauce for pasta or whatever you want to use it in. Um, so tonight, Chef has made several recipes with this product. Three. Three. I mean, it was two, but it's three now. Um, I thought, I, I just tasted out of the jar. I thought it was wonderful. So I just wanted to use it raw, right out of the jar, just you can just go, it's that, it tastes that fresh and awesome. Uh, and, and I just really wanted to do something fun, fun that, uh, you know, just, just use it as a dip, just as is. And uh, if you know me by now that I love onions, blooming onion episode. Oh my God, the blooming onion. Yeah, He's still so, so excited about his blooming onion. Wait, wait until tonight. Oh. Uh, I'm just going to be a little kid again. Uh, uh -oh. And we're going to do some crispy onions. 
just like a North American kind of thing, but I have like a little bit of turmeric, coriander powder, a little bit of more depth to it. It's an excellent recipe. Also, the color is very good too. And then uh, we are just going to grill some chicken and cook some rice and beans. Yeah. And I marinated the chicken in the uh, burning sauce. The burn. The burn. Is it called the, the burn? burn. The burn. And, and then we're just going to finish the rice. And it actually was a suggestion uh, from... Uh, Diana. Diana? No, no, no. No, it was Carlos who Carlos. suggested the oh. rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe it was you, Nick. Somebody suggested we use the yeah. uh, the condiment in the rice. In the rice. So I'm just going to do that move too. Two unexpected moves. And, uh, Get him go. I'm, 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 uh, I'm ex I love rice and beans. I'm, I'm Turkish. I'm not Southern American, but um, we eat a lot of rice and beans. So but I'm, I I'm think these fan. dishes tonight are all really nice sort of summer type foods. You can eat the... The chicken, you can grill it or cook it in the oven, or you could probably even do it on the stove top. That is, that is the beauty of those cuisines. Because it's too hot, you can't eat too much dairy fat, right? It's, it's yeah, then you get all Yeah, so we're to tonight we're not using any dairy at all. Just one, but uh, this is light, acidic, fresh, herbs. Like this, this, is, this is the food that I eat all the time at home, too. Like it's, uh, you feel like a million dollars after eating this food. So... So I'm, I'm, I'm super psyched. I love chicken, obviously. We all love chicken. <laughs> uh, and the beauty of these products, the sauces that we're using tonight, is they come in varying degrees of heat. So there's mild, there's medium, and then the burn is quite hot. So you can follow the same recipe and just use a milder version of the sauce if absolutely. people in your house don't like the... I didn't get the mild version first off the batch. I tried it. I'm like, this is wicked. I'm like, this is, tastes like the real stuff. And it was like, the hot one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Turkey, they, they, they don't, they, they just do what they believe in. So uh, I didn't know that was a mild one. I'm just like, yeah, I, Diana's not screwing around here. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. serious like, just business. Some good immigrant stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I am an immigrant also, just so you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm excited for you guys to meet Diana and, and her son Nick tonight. This is their family business. And COVID, as you can imagine, has had to, you know, has forced them to sort of change the way they do business. So they rely really heavily on retailers like us. And um, she'll be able to tell you where else you can get it. There's tons of local shops carry it uh, local all over BC. And you can always buy it through our website and we can ship it to you anywhere in Canada or the U.S. So if you're watching from the U.S., we can also ship to you there. Uh, and it's Canadian dollars, so it's like basically free. So you should order two or three at least. Um, Do it now. <laughs> uh, so Jenna is working from home, and I think she's going to go ahead. Uh, has, oh, she's already posted the recipes. Thanks, Jenna, for that. So the recipes are posted in the comments section. If you have questions for Chef, me, Deanna, Nick, while we're cooking, or maybe you want to talk to David. David knows things, too. Uh, just <laughs> type your question. I might lose the job very soon. I'm just like <laughs> David's going to take over? David's going to take over. Um, so Damn just type Jenner. your question or comment into the comment bar as usual, and I'll pass it on to um, whoever it's uh, directed at. Um, this wine is pretty good. It is good. It is good. I, I've been buying this wine for the last three weeks. Not this variety, but that this. Uh, it's called Lakeview. The port Portage Red? No. It's called Lakeside. And it's the Lakeside, Portage, Portage Red, Red yeah. so it's their red blend. So you guys know we're big fans of BC wine here. Um, right, we got to spend the money locally. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean. So this is a really good wine from our friend Lynette, who represents Lakeside, and they are in the South Okanagan. This is also 2016. It's a young red, but it's also is very mellow due to its age. It's young like us and mellow I'm due not to mean. its age. I'm not mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, is, I, I was here, mellow. they built this around me. Yeah, he, did. <laughs> he is not mellow due to his age. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I hope you're having a glass of wine and uh, are going to cook they along with be. us. Yeah, yeah, they should. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll come back in between the recipes and have another conversation. But if you have questions about the product or where to get it or any of that stuff, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, but you have work to do. And uh, I'm going to pour a glass of wine uh, for our guests. Comes. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a few minutes. This is the scary part. It takes me a minute to tap into this. It's just like somebody pushes you right out there and they're like... It's because of your age. I don't know what that means, but uh, let's turn the, her microphone down, please. I'm going to actually pass my microphone to Diana so okay. she can answer questions. And, and you can heckle, just right so there. you know. And then we can answer questions during the class. Awesome.
Uh, first things first, um, I have to cook the rice first and it's going to be cooked fresh. So um, I'm just going to start that first. Uh, let's just go a little bit high in a little pot. Um, I'm just going to saute some onions and garlic. I have uh, corn rice, sorry, corn uh, beans, cooked beans, black beans. Uh, but you could use any bean. And uh, to make chopped tomatoes here. Tonight, I don't know uh, how you feel about it, but I'm using basmati rice. I love basmati rice, and I think it has an incredible accent. I mean, there's nothing wrong with short grain, long grain, but they don't have accent. I thought it would be in, in a, a little bit more depth to the dish. And, um, and you know, we are, we are West Coast. Uh, we are, we're very multicultural, so we are allowed to cross those boundaries, I think. And if I'm not, I don't think it's, it's too late. I'm you just going to do, do it. You. Yeah. you can do whatever yeah. you want. That's a dangerous thing to say. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to this. I don't know why there's smoke coming out of my pot. Okay. You know what? Let's just roll with it. Let's see if we're just going to need the extinguisher tonight. Again. Again. Middle East, remember? I'm prone to burn things <laughs> by cooking. Um, all right, so my onions and my garlic are going to sweat. I'm just going to put a little bit of pinch of salt just to extract the moisture. Awesome. While this is going in this pot, I have about two inches of uh, vegetable oil, depending on your pot. Uh, you will at least need two inches. And if you have a deep fryer, obviously use the deep fryer. So I'm just going to turn this up. And I have a little probe here just to uh, get the temperature. Actually, this is a bit too hot. Now, at this point, please cook your onions nice. Nice being nice and soft, as soft as you can. Uh, otherwise, you'll have crunchy onions at the end, even after they're steamed, uh, which is not very good. Uh, this is the base of your dish. If you don't set your base right, then you can still build on it, but it is not going to be as uh, stable and deep. My onions look good. Now, my rice has been in its package for at least a year, maybe a year and a half. I don't know. It's, it's the COVID time, so we didn't get a lot of uh, rice back and forth. So I'm just going to put my rice in. This dry heat down there, because onions already absorb my olive oil, is going to awaken the rice's aroma. Whenever you toast things lightly, they wake up, and the, the essence really, really comes out. All right. Angie, do you know the secret to cooking a... Uh, Perfect rice every time? Uh, no. Read the package instructions, please. <laughs> <laughs> they are there for a reason. I, I was a horrible rice cooker for uh, the first part of my career. And one day somebody suggested that. Why don't you read it? Because that rice has been picked in India, and it made it to Canada. That means that it's commercially successful. So when they put some uh, suggestion uh, for cooking, it should be accurate. I would be accurate if I was selling rice to, uh, let's say, Colombia. You know, you don't want, you don't want to make a fool of yourself after you're successful. Now, I can smell my uh, rice. I am going to add my uh, tomatoes, rice, and corn to this. I love adding small textures. Uh, don't waste food. Uh, adding small textures uh, to the food. It always makes it fun. You know, and it's always different. Whatever you have around, whatever you have in your pantry, whatever you have in your fridge or your freezer, you can do some peas. Unless you're cooking for, uh, um, like, if, if, if you're cooking very traditionally, obviously don't do that. To this, I'm just going to put another pinch of salt. Do you always use oil in there, Chef, or will you use butter sometimes? Uh, depends. Uh, depends. It's summertime. I don't use a whole lot of butter no more. Um, it, it depends what I'm cooking. If I'm cooking a Turkish rice dish that's going to just be eaten with braised lamb, then I would do put a little bit of butter and, and, and make it a slightly creamy. But I tend to, I also am a Mediterranean, I tend to stick with um, olive oil most of the time. I measured my water ahead of time and do it all my prep. So I'm not, uh, you know, prepping in front of you, but we're just having a conversation. Any questions, Angie? No, not so far. Was that two to one water to the right? This is one and a half. And uh, 
because the package said so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot more moisture. Now, two to, I would go two to one if I was cooking large amounts of, of this, and I would do, take my time. I'm going to bring this up to a uh, little simmer, or actually, actually a boil. And then I'm going to turn it down to medium-low, and then we're going to steam this for 10 minutes, and then we're going to rest it for 10 minutes. Um, if you're cooking large volumes of rice, like for uh, 50 people, please use a rice cooker. It's way easier because you're looking at a, a volume like this and the heat travels from the bottom. Uh, so your bottoms will cook uh, faster than the top if you're not steaming right and this and that. But uh, for three, four people, with this recipe, you're more than welcome to use a pot. Also learn how to use a, uh, cook rice in a pot uh, um, so that you don't walk around with a rice cooker the whole time. All right, while this is all happening, excuse me, I have a little breading station for my onion dish. Oh gosh, here we go with the fried onions. Okay. This is his best day ever. <laughs> I am a man and I'm easily entertained. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I like that about, uh, anyway, uh, being a guy. Let's taste the water. That's the rice water? That's the rice water. This is when I adjust my salt. Because well, however your water tastes, your rice will taste with the same salinity at the end. So this is an easy way to do. After the rice absorbs the moisture, you won't be able to penetrate into the rice kernel. This being said, I am serving this rice as is today. If I was to serve this with a curry, I would use a different uh, uh, seasoning. Uh, especially if I'm doing a spicy curry, I would use a different season, the less salt. Well, we are going to bread some onions. Let's check our temperature. We are medium heat. We are at 124. This is about to come up to a boil. I have two eggs, and I'm going to talk to you through the breading station. Um, why do we bread things? Does anyone know? Because it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it is. We love crispy things. Uh, we do love crispy things, especially with a little bit of seasoning added to it. It becomes really, really addictive. It turns your jaw on. And I'm pretty sure it's the bone crunch from our very early days that uh, it used to be crevices, right? Uh, or a chewy cookie just taking the rip. Anyway. Yeah. You can get crunchy things from vegetables, Chef. No, our addiction to crunch I'm talking about. It's not about the crunch itself. Is Doug there? Doug, are you joining us tonight? I feel like he needs something timed. Doug's one of our viewers. He's Doug is my Siri. Oh. He's in charge of the time, so. Okay, let's just say uh, set a timer for two. Hang on, Dee, we lost uh, internet for a sec. Uh, you're good? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I have my onion rings cut. Um, I have my, you have the proportions in your recipe. I have my uh, spices and my flour with a big pinch of salt. Uh, I have whisked eggs. And I have a coarse breadcrumbs we call panko. You're more than welcome to uh, use anything. Okay? What kind of onion are you using? Just a cooking onion? Just a cheap white onion. White or yellow cooking onion? They're all white. I never saw a yellow onion. Huh? They're called yellow. No, they're red. They are cold yellow, but they're pretty much white. But white onions are a different variety than yellow cooking onions. Oh, man. I you know. guys get the crisp right. I, I, any I, onion will uh, work. Any onion will work. That's a bit too advanced for me. Yep, obviously. What? Mm. After 18 years in high-end kitchens. Anyway, so um, the first things first. Uh, this is, uh, you want... Onions are pretty slippery and they have like a little membrane in and out of them. So uh, before I toss this, so there is no moisture, almost no moisture out of it. Uh, if this was a piece of chicken, I would completely start with the flour. But I have to start something in viscous. What I have here is just a little bit of buttermilk to just toss my onion around. So I have some um, little bit of viscous liquid outside. When I put it in my flour, it's just not going to, uh, uh, it, it is going to stick to the onion, which is very, very important. So. You will need to designate a one, uh, it should be the dry hand, I don't know. Let's do this the dry hand and a wet hand. And you're not we're gonna cross cross. So you're just gonna grab your dry hand, your onions, and put it in your uh, first viscous liquid, okay? 
And then your, which one was it? Wet hen. I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Right. I'm kidding. I'm, I know what's going He's on. He's just making sure Diana's um, paying attention. Right? Uh, so my wet hen goes in and tosses the onions around and makes sure that they are nicely coated. Okay? Just, just, just nicely coated. Buttermilk will, buttermilk would work. Heavy cream would work. You have yogurt, dilutes some yogurt. That would, would work. Uh, you just need a heavy cream consistency, anything. And then this goes into my flour with my wet hand. Okay? Now my wet hand does the job. I'm going to shake this around so it's semi-coated with the flour, so it's not wet no more. Okay? Now, what I'm doing here is uh, I am stopping. So, so why we bread things is just, just to keep all the moisture in. What I'm doing here is uh, coating, it, putting a viscous so that our flour would stick. Now, flour will be your first barrier when, the, when it's frying uh, to make it crisp and the moisture stays inside. Because anything that's been heated up, you're going to push the moisture out naturally. Flour will stop that right away. But if flour didn't stop it, and I'm grabbing it with my dry hand and put it in my egg mix, toss them around, make sure they're nicely coated. Okay. Now my wet in my wet mix, I have one onion. While this works, to, my wet hand works the onion. I'm not doing one at a time, right? We're gonna do this. So we're doing. Uh, wow, you're multitasking. multitasking. Look at you go. Uh, nothing happened there. I got excited. I told you onions gets me excited. Okay, and my uh, dry, uh, my wet hand grabbed it and put it in the breadcrumbs, and my dry hand comes in, and you have this beautiful, beautiful onion ring. Look at that. How easy it is to cook. Now, when you do this, please uh, do at least six or seven onions, and pop some in the freezer, because this freezes exceptionally well. Put them on a tray. Pop it in the freezer, as you can see. So freeze them right now, like once they're breaded. Yeah, once they're breaded, just freeze them. Uh, once they're frozen, grab them, put them in a Ziploc bag. Now you have instant snacks any given day, just do like we do in the restaurants. Do you feel like you're working at A&W right now? I'm going to get a job at some point, either McDonald's or A&W in my career. Well, it better be A&W because McDonald's doesn't do onion rings, so I don't know what you're going to do at McDonald's. Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to rest my wet hand. Okay, let's wipe it off. Can you just review quickly what the seasonings were in the breadcrumbs? There's turmeric, pinch of salt, cumin, and coriander seeds. All right? And with the magic of TV, before I say that, let's just check our oil. We want to be around 325 or 350. You don't want too low because then your onions uh, will get uh, soggy. You don't want it too hot, then it will it will uh, get scorched. All right, let's go up to eight and with the magic of TV, so I don't bread onions while you're looking at me. It's in actually in the other freezer. Ain't you say something? Oh, uh, what? How's it my fault that the onions are in the other freezer? This is not about fault, Angie. This is one. I'm oh, okay. We need a little theme song for Dennis when he's going to the other freezer. <laughs> <laughs> the circus theme song, that's it's appropriate. It's not my fault, and I told you so, are my least uh, favorite uh, phrases in English, just so you know. Just exhausting. Now, as you can see, Help yourself, have more. Once this happens, this is quite uh, hardy, and it's not going to uh, drop its bread in. Uh, you can, you're more than welcome to uh, just uh, put them in a Ziploc bag. You have an air fryer. I'm sure everybody has an instant pot and air fryer. It's 2021 other than myself. Uh, and then you'll have instant snacks. All right, we're sitting at good time. It's taking its time. Any questions, Angie? No, not so far. And we haven't heard from Doug. I'm starting to get a little concerned about it. <laughs> Hopefully he'll uh, appear at some point because nobody needs Siri when you've got Doug. Obviously, right? Obviously. Um, all right. Well, such a lovely crowd. I'm, I'm, I, might be, uh, I might know what the hell I'm talking about. 
that they don't require questions. We're at 260. It's it's climbing. Sorry, what temperature are you looking for? We're looking at oil? like 325. Okay. 325 is a great uh, oven and a frying temperature, just so you know. And what are you frying in? What kind of oil is that? We downgraded the canola oil. This month has been a little bit slow. Oh, we used so to use grape oh suddenly you're on a budget? What the hell? <laughs> I'm not. I'm just being uh, thrifty. Actually, yeah, it's all he had. And yep. Chef, I have a question. Sure. When you're bringing your oil up to temperature, I tend to overshoot it. So what do you do? Just set it on medium heat and let it slowly come up to temperature? Um, depends on how much of a hurry and I am. Like right now, I got to go, so I just cranked it up. Uh, but medium is the best because uh, at this pace, if you get distracted, that can catch on fire. And once that catches on fire, it's, it's a lot of work to uh, Not on a top like this, but if you're using a uh, flame. So it's just best to be uh, safe and uh, sorry. So medium, medium. So if you have the time, medium is, is the best place to be. We're at 300. Okay, now let's bring our condiments in because this is going to happen very instantly. These are our dips. Let's grab our plates. Always be prepared, right? I put a little wax paper so it kind of looks like a kind of like a diner, which I, I, I dig it. Uh, I'm a breakfast cook by origin, so uh, <laughs> by origin, a I, Turkish uh, breakfast cook. No, not in Turkey. I was a I was a white collar in Turkey. I was I was in a blue collar. The so Gladys is joining us tonight. Hi Gladys, nice to see you. Gladys Hi. is asking about the varieties of ahi. Um, so Gladys, I'm going to let um, Deanna talk to you about that when she um, comes up to try the onion rings in a couple minutes. Um, but there's um, two or three different kinds of ahi and each of them has their own sort of different uh, heat profile. Gladys is in... Um, she lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, okay. and um, she joins us lots of Thursday nights here. And so she knows all about uh, chilies and spices, and um, I'm sure she has access to tons of good spicy food there. But Gladys, next time I send you some stuff down, remember, remind me to throw some ahi in the package for you. <laughs> it, it, you, you will enjoy it. Even you have all the chilies in the world over there. This is, uh, this is quite delicious. And it's effortless. You know, convenience is, 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 is an excellent thing, I find. All right, this is frying beautifully. Let's check it out. Sorry, this is the time I get a little, little bit of focus because when you open fry things, you really, really have to pay attention. It is, a, it is a dangerous duty to open fry things, especially with a high heat going 100 miles an hour like this. Chef, your uh, best friend Jack Nicholson wants to know if you deliver. Depends on how, depends on the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's a big tipper. Um, oh, that was quick. Well, they go fast. Yeah, they do go fast. I mean, if they don't... Uh, Put your hand in there, it's quite hot in there. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be an onion ring in a matter of a uh, few minutes. Okay, so this is up, and I'm just gonna put these last also. I might as well. There's these three here too, are you freezing yeah. them? Uh, uh, let's live dangerous, sure. <laughs> I usually like to put uh, uh, what do you say? Put them in a freezer so it hardens up the breading, so the breading doesn't fall off. But you know, since uh, we've done it. So when you drop the frozen onion rings into the oil, it's going to bring the temperature down pretty quickly. So yes. you want to make sure you don't totally overload the pan, otherwise the oil will be cold and your onion rings will start to get soggy. Yeah, I mean, it, it will catch up and crisp up eventually. But, you know, just you got to do it in the right uh, in the right in the first place, which I am running at a little bit low temperature right now. My temperature is... Um, and you have to season things as soon as they come out of the fryer. Yeah, when, when it's hot, uh, hot things, uh, again, when things are heated up, if you put, put a pinch of cumin uh, powder on there, the heat will really open up the cumin and whatnot. Oh, there's Siri. 
No Doug, just no Doug today. And we're just going to leave it alone for a minute. What was the timer for, Chef? Your rice? Uh, the rice, the first steaming period. Uh, the package instruction says 20 minutes, but I cut it at 12 because this is a small batch. But the larger batches, you just got to go a little bit more uh, further. And while these are fine, let's make some room. These are really, really nice and light. Uh, you, you're more than welcome to use a batter. That is fun too, but um, tonight we're choosing uh, the bread then. Because with breading, with batter, you cannot freeze them. With breading, you can. Um, yeah. The rest of the onion rings are mine. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> And uh, as goes, let's give our lovely chunky salsa. So which salsa are you using, Chef? We are using the chunky salsa, the spicy one. The medium. So it's medium one, sorry. There's serious spice in the spicy one, so we're using the medium ones. Let's take these out. I mean, it was a matter of five minutes. In a matter of five minutes, we have food. There's nothing, yeah. And it's barely work, and I just already breaded three of them. So cooking is not that hard. It just takes a little bit of enthusiasm. Again, when I dropped the onions, it went down to 250. But right now, this looks like a million dollars. OK, nice pinch of salt on these as well. How hungry are you? Nick looks oh. hungry. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting You can do some uh, damage. Good. You don't have to finish it all. I don't think Nick will have trouble eating some <laughs> onion rings, Chef. You know what, Nick? I don't blame you. I'm hungry now after looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> that was my dad's favorite, were onion, onion rings. Onion rings, oh. really? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's such a great item. The price point. Would you like to come over, Diana? Oh, my God. And let's put this on you. I don't uh, You don't need your mask, but Chef will put his on when he's back. Yeah. 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 Oh, if you want, I'll put mine. Yes. I will put mine on. Oh. Yes. Diana, do you mind just wearing the um, oh. microphone? Just clip it onto your shirt. Everyone can hear you. Oh, this no. Okay. Let's get rid of the product. And Ilya, please watch out. Hello. This is very, very, very hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get out of the way. All right, come over. Oh, As you can see, three, three minutes of work or five minutes of work, and then uh, we have food. Totally worth it. Well, you're, you're about to taste it. She can be the judge. Absolutely. Now, why don't you just give it a taste? Tell us your thoughts. You can be very critical, by all means. Okay. But, uh, and then after, just tell us just how, how this has all happened. OK, thank you. Well, I'm going to try it on its own first. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. And a little bit of spice just gives oh. a nice accent to it. Yeah. I think. Not onion. But yeah, blooming onion is a novelty yeah. though. Blooming oh. onion is for uh, special days. Mm. This is for uh, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and brunch. Mm. And, uh, Delicious. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, he, I must say, even though it's my sauce, it does add it's little thing. When, when you have that, that kind of a delicious condiment, you know, the, I actually thought about just blitzing it, pureeing it, and this and that. But I mean, this is all your hard work. It's so delicious, so convenient. All you need to do is just tap the top, open it up, and you're off to a great start. And you're done. Yeah. Maybe after eating it 50 times, then you might want to mix in a mayonnaise, just for variety. But that would be your choice. Yeah. Uh, this sauce, the, the Yeah, we just, yeah. Really good. we just talked about it, yes. We love a good dip here. Yeah, yeah. We're, a, we're, a, we're a saucy bunch here. Mm. We're very saucy. So, tell us your story. Okay, the story. You, no, 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 no. It's, it's good, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Where's your glass of wine? Let me grab your glass no. of wine. No. 
So we started ahi with the mild. We kind of figured that Colombi Canadians were relatively mild in spice. Yeah, we have you been to Tim Hortons? <laughs> that's, 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 that's just warming sensation, it's spicy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I made the mild. I, I figured it had enough spice. We start with fresh ingredients, no preservatives. It's just the vegetables, and then we add the vinegar and the spices. It's our condiments are literally handmade. We really? hand fill the vegetables. It's all chopped. Hand fill the vegetables into the jar. Each jar gets weighed. Then we add the juice and the vinegar back in, and we add the condiments, okay. and that's it. That's so it's real fresh. No, it you starts can taste from it. fresh. Absolutely, you can taste it. Yeah, but then we did a lot of farmers markets, so. People would say, ah, oh, this is delicious. You need to make a hotter one. So we made the hot one, which soon after got demoted to a medium. Because people hot. kept asking for hotter. I, I, I thought out of the, just, I just said in the beginning of the episode, I'm like, out of the jar, I'm like, this is good. Because <laughs> I love people who has guts to do the right thing, what you believe it is than rather than playing it for the crowds. Because when you do things right, they actually, it just explodes just like this. Right. Yeah. Mm. So we made the hot. Then it was a group of people in the West End that said, you need to go hotter. So that's when we made the burn, which is what is uh, the chicken's been marinated in. Yeah. So I made the which burn. Is hot. Which is really hot. Yeah. It's actually hotter than sriracha. Yeah. So I figured we're good. And then, you know, a few months in, you need to go hotter. And I was like, how hot is hot? Like, I don't know what you really want. So basically what we did is we multiplied the heat of the meat of the burn by 10, okay. 10 times. And we made the smoking. The smoking is really, can really I try? Hot. Can I try it? Absolutely. <laughs> you know what? I am, I'm down for a challenge. Let's see how bad this gets. Oh, boy. It's, it so they're basically, it's grape flavor up front. Huh? You want one? Yeah. Sure. So it's grape flavor up front, but it does. It'll hurt you? It, 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 well, I don't know. My, my son and my husband eat this all the time, so I won't. Put a lot that's in. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good dab. There you go. There you go, sir. So that's the smoking. So it's got a smoky flavor. All th that's the only one that has a bit of a smoky flavor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was the it is delicious, is what it is. But it is, it is spicy. Mm. Um, but it's not. Um, Give it a second. It's not scorching. You know it's what? got, well, we, we mm. do use Ooh. a mixture with ghosts, and then we had to use um, pure capsicum extract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't tell me that. It just said habanero. Oh, oh man. Yay. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. A little what? salt. A little salt. So it's okay. Salt, you know what? This is interesting. You're offering him salt. Salt doesn't make spicy food spicier. But when, you, when you're burning, you put a little salt and it calms. Right. So like when I do farmer's markets and somebody, Overdose. yeah, I give them a little salt and it, it brings their, everything back into place. <laughs> it, is, it, is, yeah. it is excellent. Uh, it is spicy, uh, but it's not like uh, some of the hot sauces. You eat it and it just scorches the whole thing. Just designed for pain. This is, this is delicious. Well, it's got a lot of flavor. Yeah, also. I mean, that for us, wow. I mean, we could just bottle pure capsicum extract and There's so be it, whatever it is. But our goal is, for, is, Ooh, is flavor. Flavor first. flavor first, and then we do <laughs> deliver on the heat. <laughs> Listen, pain is just a feeling. <laughs> it's, you, can, you can't ignore it. It's, 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 it's very much possible. <laughs> we get freaked out because it makes us uncomfortable, but it's just a feeling. You just... Yeah. It's not causing any damage or no, anything. No, no, no. It's delightful. It's it's delicious. It's oh, it's yeah. an experience also. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, Does your family still eat ahi every like all the time? 
All the time, like the smoking habanero, we, because we, we do also, um, well, because I do the demos, I used to do the demos for the farmer's market, so I used to put sauce in three kilo bags, right. and so I would do the refills for my sampling, but I mean, I order four, like we get, we fill four bags of smoking, because Nick, my son Nicholas and my husband eat smoking on everything. Really? It's so good yeah. though. And the pain is gone right now. Yeah. It's, it's just it's, nice warmness. Yeah. And the other thing is you don't drink beer when you're having the smoking habanero or whiskey because then it's like throwing gasoline on fire. It's okay. really, really... I don't usually do whiskey and hot sauce. Yeah, but, <laughs> but even beer, you'd think, a, you know, a, you a beer? Really yeah. yeah, no. Okay, so, cool. so that's super gonna delicious. Do the chicken mm. next. Okay. And then, okay. Um, if you want to enjoy your onion rings, we'll get I you am. back up yeah. there after the Thank chicken's you. <laughs> ready. I'm uh, sweating. Nick was hungry. Oh, look at this. He's uh, taking those onion rings down. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, so. <laughs> uh, that's up to, do I get a bottle of hot sauce? Absolutely. Uh, we, we give, let's make a deal. Uh -huh, Let's make a deal. Okay, now this is the original. Uh, no, it's not the original. But you told me the story that uh, I think when you first bought it, you made guacamole with it. Yeah, that was the first thing that people were most comfortable using it for. It is, uh, mm -hmm. I think it, we're a match made in heaven. Avocados, ripe, cut in half. Please be careful with the pit of avocados because especially when they're creamy, sometimes the pits will be super soft and your knife can go through it. And uh, I've seen a lot of uh, avocado cuts and, uh, and obvious. I had one guest one day um, in one of the classes to open up the avocados. He was doing this. Oh, God. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And um, Was he doing it way up in the air like yeah. that? <laughs> I'm like, oh, first things first, whenever you cut something, always cut away from yourself. And if you're going to tap an avocado <laughs> pit, almost you do it 50 times a day, never do it in your hands. Because I... Um, I've seen at least 10 cuts in one of, in, in my kitchens. And always down, always lightly, not just go obviously, right? So, get the avocado scooped up. Garbage far away. Because uh, I've got to make a lot of guacamole, because I can't eat guacamole. Oh, there it is. There's a pit here. Those avocados are so ripe. Again, not on your hand. Tilt. And get rid of it. Right I've broken down some avocados. He's full of them. Yeah. He's full of something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it's working. I got the microphone. I have the control. Good point. Let's make a deal. <laughs> so Dennis so, is like Monty Hall tonight. All about deal. Um, I put my chickens. Um, the, the recipe is there. I marinated my chicken in the Here. hot sauce, just the regular hot sauce, the burn, not the excess. I would have put the uh, smoking. smoking on it, but the acid in the sauce will break down my chicken. That tender, I thought that chicken needs tenderization, but uh, which one should we use? We should use this as open. The medium ahi. You, that's my favorite in the guacamole. All right, let's yeah. put uh, a little bit and see how it goes. Get a masher. I like using masher or a fork so I get some uh, texture in my guacamole. Mm. I usually never use oil in my guacamole as well. And if they package that um, the original ahi in a little bag so you can take it camping and make your guacamole in your trailer. <laughs> You must have a really yeah, cold following. Should. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> <laughs> they can't just give it up. Dude, she's been making ahi for like 15 years, so mm. people Oops. love it, obviously. Yeah, well, it's, if it's been 15 years, there's something is right about it. And it tastes like that, too. It tastes like million dollars. <laughs> so, um, this is good. I'm not even going to put cilantro in there, just to see if it works. We could use a little bit more. Ah, uh, what the hell with it? <laughs> <laughs> YOLO. <good> stuff. <laughs> what do you think? 
What is that? YOLO? I know what that is. I'm, oh. I'm, still, I'm still having a hard time with the hip jargon. I, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm old and uh, not interested. Yeah, you're so. not hip at all. No, go on. <laughs> Just a pinch of salt, not too much, because there's a lot of sweetness to this condiment. The sweetness is strictly what comes from the tomatoes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no sugar added. No sugar added. Mm -hmm. And in any, uh, except our marinara does have a little sweetness, but. A little and sweet. as this is a clean spoon, double the no double dipping. So this is your favorite chef. Keto people can eat the ahi. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know you keto. love a keto people. It's so hot right now. The whole Costco is uh, close to the cashier part is all keto. Have you, have you checked it out? Uh -huh. like, the whole thing is keto. Well, they don't have a he there. <laughs> Why not? Because uh, it's here. Exactly. <laughs> all right, going against Costco today. So you put the chicken in the oven, the rice Chicken's is cooking. Yet. The rice is cooked. I just need to fluff it. I'm just going to make sure that the chicken is not being scorched. Nick ate his onion rings and his mom's onion rings, so I think he liked them. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. What? Now, let's get up. <laughs> now, let's get up plates. We still have one more move with the sauce. We're going to grab the rice pot, open it up. It looks lovely. And grab a spoon. Now, at this point, please be gentle with your rice because there's a lot of steam. We're just going to fluff it so it dries out a little bit. That whole steam is just going to take the excess moisture. Okay. Obviously, we need to taste this, and this is at 8 million degrees, but anything uh, for you. You're used to it. You just ate the uh, uh, smoking. smoking. That was yeah. delightful. This is going to be painful. <laughs> One more pin, little pinch of salt, not too much. And then I'm going to grab uh, the burnt sauce and I'm going to mix it in. Uh, the ocean is cold. This is not in your recipe. This is a pro tip. Pro tip. Pro tip. Pro tip number two. Oh gosh, what just went in there? Was the that burn. the smoking? Okay. The, the burnt. Take it. No, 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 that was the rest of the. Oh, sh no, 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 the bird. Take it easy on the smoking over there. I don't need instructions to cook. Thank you. Back off, please. Uh, Let's see if the chicken is. Uh... Apparently, uh, Nick's a little nervous about the salt level, chef. What? Nick's not a fan of cooking with too much salt. He, he tells his mom the ocean is calling, they want their salt back. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's you. It's no, it's Nick. <laughs> no, he's, he always bugs me because I, I use salt kind of like you. And so he's like, well, oh, the ocean's is, calling. <laughs> salt is good for you, though. It, it restores your electrolytes. Yeah, like if you we, when, when, you take, when they take you to the hospital and you can't take anything no more after accident, salty water. Yep. That goes in uh, and, and it's... But I hate excessively salty things also. But food uh, needs salt. Food yeah. needs salt. Food needs salt. seasoning, not necessarily salt. Uh, if you're eating a nice, ripe, uh, sweet summer tomato, you don't need to season that very right. nice. You just gotta serve it at room temperature and, and back off from that kind of quality. But in North America, we, we use a lot of uh, elevated seasonings because we're very used to our snacks. And they usually come in like really high uh, in, in, in salt sugar content. But See, Nick, your mom's you? right. Listen to your mom. No, yeah. no, but, uh, but <laughs> no. can I tell you this, though? Uh, you know when things are really, really get salty? When they're balanced with acid and sugar. Like you eat a bag of ketchup chips, that is an enormous salt intake, and that you don't need. But a well-seasoned food, well-seasoned food. Yeah, thanks, Chef. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I should start bringing my... Uh, Your drum? My Your drum, drum kit. And, and I the have other... drums in my living room. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, no children, uh, just a dog and a <laughs> drum kit. And, and no furniture. Yeah. Milk crates. Milk crates. I, I'm oh. fascinated with milk crates. I think it's a great design, don't you think? And they, they serve for everything. They stack. Oh, they don't encourage things. him. <laughs> you can just like dip it in the ocean, wash crab or whatever. Uh, you can uh, sit on it. 
I, I, I can give you a pro tip on uh, using a milk crate as a seat. <laughs> so in the, in the beginning, it will be really, really, really stiff and it will be uncomfortable when you're back. Uh, when you, but you just leave them under the sun and the sun, for a couple of days, it, it just mellows the plastic. Let's say if you leave it in the morning, you just go sit on it in the evening. Two days uncomfortable, the third day you will have that little nice <laughs> cushion. And, uh, Pro tip. I use a lot of... Just got their money's worth yep. with that right there. That's a third yeah. pro tip for you. Because <laughs> chicken is not cooking. <laughs> Deanna was going to tell you something about salt, Chef. Yes, well, Deanna. Well, what that. happens is that people nowadays, they really read their labels. Yeah. So we were up at 7% sodium when we first started, and people, oh, my God, that's a lot of salt. And I'm like, but it is a condiment. You're not going to eat the whole bottle. You just exactly. eat. Exactly. It, it's just a little bit. So we actually lowered a little bit the sodium. Okay. So... It gives the people the option of adding more salt. So I think we're at that happy verge. place. It's a happy place for the people who don't eat salt. Now, can I say something to those, to, the, to those people, though? What happens when you take a large tablespoon of mustard and put it in your mouth? It, it's not a very pleasant experience. No. Meaning that condiments has to be seasoned stronger so that they would serve as a condiment, right? Right. So uh, your, your seasoning always depends on your serving size. If you're serving in a mousse bouche, like a little porcini soup in a little espresso cup, that has to be seasoned very aggressively. But if you take the same seasoning and you put it in a 12 ounce soup and serve it like that, then it's people are much. just going to just say that this is ridiculous. So you have to be able to make that differentiation. And with the condiments, it has to be fully seasoned. And these, these are actually delicious. Whatever you do is it's working. Yeah, you start with a little and you add to, As you go. Until where it's where you prefer it. Until it's well seasoned. Till it's well seasoned. <laughs> to your liking. <laughs> nice little rice. It's nice, fluffy, wonderfully cooked. So the extra moisture from the ahi that you added into the rice isn't going to make it mushy. It's just adding some flavor. Exactly. If your rice is cooked properly, if you After followed the moisture, it's just going to make it more uh, uh, slippery rather than mushy. That it, it, it is it is going depends on how, how much uh, moisture you have, and a nice dollop of guacamole because it's Thursday, and I have nothing else to do. I should have put myself a portion too. There we go. So that's that. Sitting at five minutes, this chicken better be cooked. Man, you didn't even burn anything tonight, and Doug's not here. What the hell? Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crap. Oh, no. Ignore the lady, please. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, so you Chris. chose chicken thighs tonight. Because they're cheaper than the chicken breast, and, and they're, they're better. I wouldn't say better. I love chicken breast, too. But these are juicier. No, there is this, see, now, better flavor, I agree. Uh, more connective tissue. More forgiving. More forgiving, I agree. But chicken breast is a royal piece of meat, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, when, you when people say chicken breast is dry, I usually tell them there are two kinds of cooks. The one that can cook a chicken breast, and then the, the one the that ones cannot. The one that can't. <laughs> so, uh, Nick, you know what, I'll give you two pieces of chicken. Two? Yeah. Oh, oh he's, he's getting upset. You're Look getting at two him. bottles of ahi. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> take all the chicken. I'll take the case. How hungry are you? What, one piece? Two uh, one piece is good one enough piece? for me. Yes, please. One piece? Simple. And then a little bit of cilantro. You know what? Let's give it a quick chop. I usually don't chop my herbs, but, you know. All right. Who's tasting this? I think Nick's up. Nick, it's your turn. Take your wine and uh, your fork. So it looks, doesn't look like you're drinking too much. Uh, yeah, and grab the mic, Nick. There you go. Please. And you might need a knife for your chickens. Which has a wonderful host, and you will give one to you. No mask. No mask. No mask. How fun this is. Thank you. 
We do this every Thursday. Come by. There's nobody to eat the food. I will be here every Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. There's not hearings every Thursday. That's okay. Have a good one. Get in there. I need my. Can grab my. Oh, his fork. He forgot his weapon. Yeah. Use your hands, Nick. What an amateur. <laughs> That's what we say in Turkish. Uh, fish and chicken needs to be eaten by hand. Oh, this is beautifully plated, too. Oh, man. It might be hot. Good. Good. Yeah. Messed it up? The rice is really good. It's spicy. Yeah. yeah well, you know, we're cooking, we're cooking mm. Colombian. Not Colombian, but somewhat Southern American style food. So you have to do justice to it. The Tim Horton spice is, uh, you know, we can do it on the something else. That is amazing. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Nick, what's your job at Ahi? My job, so I'm a little bit more focused in operations, so operations and sales. So I do a lot of the scheduling and the planning. And He's the CEO. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I'm interested, I'm interested to hear what that is. Mom, mom loves to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I do yeah, a lot of the planning and scheduling and, and then a lot of the, and then contribute to the sales as well. And it definitely keeps me busy and it's a lot of fun because it's changing activities and I get to spend a lot of time with mom and dad. So. And That's so you were like four when your mom started this company? Uh, not quite, but yeah, I was yeah pretty young, about ten. Yeah. Ten, twelve. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's been an amazing experience for sure, and I wouldn't change it for anything. Awesome. Working with the family is a challenge, but that obviously depends <laughs> on the family. Yeah. yeah. I I enjoyed mine too. I I worked a couple of years with them, and uh, it, was, it was fun. That rice is delicious with the black beans in it. So good. I mm -hmm. never expected him to join the company. You're good there. Yeah, no? David wants us all in the same place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just I don't want to open the camera in your didn't. You right didn't think Nick would be uh, the whole, uh, part of the business? He yeah, did yeah. his last year of yeah. university in Italy. Okay. And then he got back, mm -hmm. and so then he had to get a new phone. And then I called him, and he has always never answered. <laughs> and then there was a message, this is Nick with the Heat Gourmet product. And I fell on my backside. What? A, that, that's a, we had never really spoken that he was going to work with us. Yeah. And that was, for me, Aww, the best thing. Oh, such ever a good <laughs> boy. <laughs> such a good boy. Yeah. yeah. So um, the ahi, do you, do you still live with your folks? You do? So do you guys cook with it a lot in your house? Oh, yeah. Do you do the cooking at home? No. That's, no, mom that's does. Mom. I do the cleaning. Okay. Oh, that's Dad good. and I do the cleaning. Really? But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but mom cooks with it, and then uh, dad and I will throw some smoke and habanero on top of it. And <laughs> then you'll fix it? That's right. You'll uh, fix it? Yeah. Uh, and we do have a, a bird, a macaw, which is our... Oh, you do? Yeah, we do. She's like she's the inspiration for our logo. Okay, cool. And you can have smoking on the food, and hogs will still eat it. Birds <laughs> don't. Get the, heat. the birds like spicy food. Well, I don't think they get the heat they, because they do eat peppers, so it's not. It doesn't really like. No, she just eats straight out of our plate. And that's awesome. My, my dog doesn't care either. <laughs> so you eat like spicy food. It doesn't matter. So I think my favorite part of Ahi is the people. The product is amazing, and you've met the family tonight. Um, I'm snuggling up to Nick because he's got the microphone. Um, so this has been my favorite part of my business here at Well Seasoned is working with families um, like Deanna and Nick and Carlos. Um, they have this amazing immigrant story. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me with this? They have this amazing immigrant story uh, where they come to Canada and create food out of their, um, their family heritage. And uh, <laughs> sorry, our cleaners came early tonight and decided now was when they should vacuum. So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so getting to know the family and their product and the pride they have in the product has just really been amazing for me. And at Well Season, we sell 
a lot of products, not like this one, but products where I've gotten to know the family over the 17 years we've had the store and I've had the pleasure of watching the business grow and they've worked with us and we work with them anyhow. It's like amazing. So you guys should support as much local as you can. Support Ahi. This is where your money goes. This isn't craft. It's not some giant company. It's a family and they're so awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, spend your money here, buy it online, but support local. So thanks for showing off this product, Chef. Thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good job. And but it I was say, delicious. I, I, Deanna, grab the microphone. Okay, so I must oh. say. <laughs> the whole family is coming in. They're in each other's bubbles. So, so I must say that if it weren't for somebody like Angie with her beautiful store that has supported us from day one, we would never have the opportunity to grow into where we are now because ahi is an unknown word nobody knows what it is but she's given us the huge opportunity to get us out there and introduce us to the world and into her world which has been great well we can't do it without each other it takes yeah. a village so it takes a village, i'm absolutely. glad you're in my village chef thank you for doing a good job with this nick thanks you're for eating all the thank food and yeah, well, anytime, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> for all the awesome service you provide us so it's been a pleasure working with you guys if you need information about Ahi, you can always contact us here at Well Season. I posted a link to their website. They've got tons of great recipes and other information online. So shop local, eat local, support local. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we will see you right back here next Thursday at 5.30. You guys be safe and eat lots of Ahi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Good night.